In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a tabbed interaction for Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here, by all means, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your e-learning buddies. I had this idea of a tabbed interaction and it just sort of came to me and I thought, you know, I can build that and also have the ability to have audio for each one of the tabs. This is a problem with Adobe Captivate widgets, which certainly give you the ability to create a tabbed interaction, but there's no opportunity, at least with version 12.5, that allows you to add audio to each one of those tabs. So I'm gonna show you how to build a custom solution today that does exactly that. Let's go. Okay, so to create this interaction, we're just gonna need a few blocks that will get us up and running here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the add text blocks icon and choose a paragraph block. One of the things I often will do when I'm starting a new Captivate project is I'll go into the project properties here and click on edit theme. This particular default light theme that comes from Adobe uses a couple of different fonts, which I don't personally think really match well together. So I'm going to replace all instances of the Georgia font with just the Arial font, I think is fine for our purposes here today. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And I am going to change the font here. In this case here, we're using heading number two. I think heading five is fine. Let's replace this with a title called Click to Reveal. Yes, it's a tabbed interaction, but from a student's perspective, they're all sort of the same thing here. And I'll just put the introductory text there. Next thing we're going to need to add is a button block. So we're going to choose Add Interactive Components, and we'll select the button block here. I'm gonna have three buttons in my button block. Left aligned like this is okay, but let's first of all go ahead and switch them over to something that looks more like tabs that you would see in a tabbed interaction here. I'm gonna change the labels of these to be item one, item two, and item three. And the other thing I'm going to do is under alignment and spacing, make sure that the bottom padding is set to zero so that it looks like they're truly tabs with the content that's gonna go below. Now I'm gonna choose an add media blocks option and choose image here. I'm gonna choose the fourth option here and just make a few changes. We'll click on the area outside of any text or images here and we'll change this to 80% width so it matches the other blocks in this project here. Change auto fit height to be unselected and I'll just scroll down and I just wanna reduce this down to a much smaller size here. Lastly, I'm gonna add another button block. In this case here, this will be for my back and next buttons that you would typically find in an e-learning course. Let's label those here. So let's make sure that says back and this says next. A little bit about buttons themselves. These tabbed buttons here, if we show the multi-states that are built into these types of buttons, you'll see that there's a normal state, a hover state when your mouse rolls over it, a visited state, which is currently disabled, you can tell by the title of that, and a selected state. So when I click on this, this will change from the white to black to indicate that that's selected. And I'm okay with that. That works for this particular interaction here. One of the other buttons that I'm going to need to change the states for is my next button. I don't need it to have a selected state, so I'm gonna disable that. But when we arrive on the slide, I want the next button to look disabled. So I'm gonna right click on that and enable that. With the back button, I'm also going to disable the selected state here. Because I'm using my own navigation controls, I'm gonna go into the TOC play bar section here 
and actually just turn off the play bar. So the only controls the student will see are the ones that I'm providing for them. So for this to work, we need these three objects, this image, this subtitle, and body text to contain the alternate images, subtitle, and body text for item one, two, and three. So let's start off with the image. I'm gonna click on the replace image icon in the middle of the default image, and we'll choose the assets library, and I will select an image that we can use for our purposes here today. Replace that image, and there we go. I recommend that you take a look at images using the edit image and just sort of see what it looks like on the different size devices. Whereas, you know, fixed height might look better. Maybe scaled is a better choice to give you more access to content on a mobile phone. And if you're trying to get to fit within a certain window, that could be something that you select as well. Fit and scaled, I think, will work well for these images here. I'm going to go ahead and press save. And what we now want to do is add the alternate versions of this image here. So we're going to add a state. We're going to call this item two. And with that state selected, I'm going to click on replace image, go to assets library again, and we'll choose another image that works for this particular interaction here. You can either click on add new, or I kind of like duplicating this state, making a small change to the label for it. And then with that state selected, I can then click assets library and find my third image that I will use for this interaction. Perfect. Let's change the text for our subtitle here. We'll say item one. And for our body text, we'll say item one, or maybe we'll add, this is the text for item one. Put a period at the end of that sentence there. So starting with the subtitle, we can add additional states to that object here. We'll call this item two. And with that selected, we will change the text to actually read item two. I'll duplicate this and we will make item three. Change the label here so that it's easy to identify later. And I think we're good. Let's select the body text. And again, I'll add item two and the body text for that will be everything the same except the number two. And I will duplicate this, change the label of the state to reflect item three, and we will just change that text at the end to be. There we go. So we have all of our content for this interaction. The next thing I want to do is make sure that when we arrive on the slide, a couple of things are happening here. First of all, I don't want to see any content. So I'm going to select the image. And using this little icon in the upper right-hand corner, we're going to select Hide During Publish. We'll do the same thing for item two, Hide During Publish. And for the body text, Hide During Publish. If I click in my scrap area here and then click on the Interactions icon, we can add a slide level interaction that will disable this next button when we arrive on the slide. So let's click on Add an Interaction. Here's where you choose your trigger. In this case, slide enter is our trigger. And we are going to disable our next button. Press next and done. Now to enable the next button, we can do another slide level interaction. And we'll take care of that right now. We'll click on the plus icon here. And we'll say when objects clicked, and we can choose which objects we're talking about. Next, we want to enable our next button. So when we arrive on the slide, the next button will be disabled. When you press item one, item two, item three, the next button will then be available and learners can then proceed with the rest of the project. All right, we need some slide level audio as well. So I'm going to go into the audio icon, make sure that nothing is selected by clicking on the thumbnail in our slide navigator here. And we'll click this little drop down and we'll select generate text to speech here. 
Now, the caption shows up at the bottom here, and I'm just gonna paste in the text I wish to use. In fact, I'm gonna divide it into two sentences. So I'm gonna control X out the second sentence, click the add new caption icon, and then paste in the second sentence there. It doesn't matter where that transition is. Once you click on generate audio, if you're using one of the new AI voices like Brandon here, it will adjust that transition mark to be appropriate for the final audio recording here. That looks good to me. So we'll go ahead and X out of this here. And actually I'm gonna paste that same text into our top of the slide here so that it matches. Now we're ready to start building the interaction itself. So let's click on item one. That's the button for that. We'll go into the interactions and we're going to say when we press this, the following actions will run. So the first thing we need to do is to pause the slide. I've learned that pausing the slide will stop any audio that's playing on the slide itself. So that's useful. You don't want to have interaction audio over top of slide audio. So this will cut one off and begin the other here. So we're going to go down to pause timeline. We'll select that, press done. Next thing we need to do is set the state of our objects here on screen here. So we will set the state of our image to be item one or the default state. Next and done. And we will set the state of our subtitle to be item one, done. And set the state of our body text to be item one or the default state and then done here. They're still not visible. So we need to have an action that shows all of these objects. So the image, the subtitle and the body text there. And we'll click next and then done. If this isn't the first time that you've clicked one of these buttons, you might need to stop the previous item from playing. So we're gonna click add a new action, go into more and stop media. And that's a general command that will stop any media from playing. And last, we need to play the audio because that's the whole point of this. Otherwise, you'd use one of the widgets. We want audio for each of the click to reveals here. So we're going to add a new action, click more, play media, and we will browse to where I happen to have that audio in place. Audio one is the slide audio. Audio two is for item one. And we'll click on open and that gets added to our project to be triggered by clicking item one there. Click done, and we're good to go. So we've got about seven actions here. I don't know what the threshold is, but there comes a point where you start to notice a time delay from the first item to maybe the seventh, maybe it's the eighth or ninth item. But one of the things you can do to make this all seemingly happen at the same time Press the first item, hold down your shift key, press the last item, and then we can merge these together. Now I could select item two and then add all seven of these actions over again with some small differences to account for the different content. But an easier way to do that is I can right click item one and I can copy those interactions and then right click item two and paste those interactions in. And I can do the same thing for item three. So now I have a copy of all the actions for item one in item two and three. I now just need to make some small changes. So in this case here, we're going to set the state of our three objects to be item two. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will change that from the default state to item two. Make sure you unselect the first one, click next, and then done. Now let's do it for the subtitle. I will unselect item one, and we will select item two. Click next, and done. And for the body text, we'll do the same thing again. Change that from the default to item two. Next, and done. 
We also need to change the audio, obviously. So we're going to edit that action. We're going to edit the target. And I'm going to browse to audio number three, which is the second item in this case. Click Done. That takes care of all the actions for item two. Let's do item three. So again, we'll edit the image so that we're displaying the third state. Don't forget to unselect the first one. Next and done. And we'll now do the subtitle. We'll change that from that to item three. Next and done. And then our body text here, we will edit that to be the third group there. And again, we'll change our audio. Click on the edit there. Browse to, in this case here, now audio four. Click on open and done. Let's test it out now. I think we're pretty much good to go here. We'll see if this works as expected here. Press each tab to learn more. Once you have fully explored this slide, the next button will be enabled and allow you to proceed. So notice that none of our objects on screen are visible and the next button is disabled. Let's press item one. Here is the text for item one. Great. Let's do item two. Here is the text for item two. And let's do item three. Please note the next button should become available when I click that. Here is the text for item three. Perfect. So now our learners can click the next button and proceed with the rest of the e-learning project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.